Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light is wrecked, sales down, strikes imminent, literally nothing can save them. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Fast Company, Anheuser-Busch strike appears unavoidable, says Teamsters Union. The Teamsters say 5,000 union employees who brew and package Budweiser and Bud Light are prepared to go on strike as early as March 1st. And the Teamsters are also preparing to pay their striking workers more than they normally would get. From the Teamsters, Teamsters increased future strike benefits for Anheuser-Busch workers. Donald Trump is doing whatever he can to even help the Bud Light people. It's not working. I follow social media sites that love Donald Trump. They don't love this and they're not buying into it. From DailyMail.com, Trump calls time on Bud Light boycott and says it's paid the price for partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. And says parent company Anheuser-Busch is a great American brand that deserves a second chance. It is an American brand. Of course, it's not an American company and they abuse their customers, cost a lot of people their jobs because they wanted to, quote, plant the seeds of inclusion at Anheuser-Busch. From Politico, Trump on the eve of a fundraiser with Anheuser-Busch lobbyists defends the company. Quote, perhaps he asked, the beer deserves a second chance. The lobbyist is providing campaign cash for the Trump people and probably for other Republicans as well. Anheuser-Busch will spend any amount of money. They do not care. They're spending billions at this point to try to get back the business they lost, but it's clearly not working. From The Hollywood Reporter, after Bud Light's tough year, it's bringing in Post Malone, Dana White, and a genie for Super Bowl reboot. The beer brand coming off a year in which sales declined double digits is introducing the Bud Light genie to viewers. And from townhall.com, woke advertising. First advertising wanted to sell, then to entertain. Now it wants to indoctrinate. This is why the Bud Light people are having such a hard time is their indoctrination failed. People saw what they were trying to do and nobody wants to stand for it. Nobody wants to be associated with it. From Fast Company, Anheuser-Busch strike appears unavoidable, says the Teamsters Union. With its biggest marketing day of the year on the horizon and the controversy surrounding its promotion with Dylan Mulvaney and subsequent handling of the situation, Anheuser-Busch could now be facing a work stoppage. The Teamsters have issued a statement saying a strike at the beer giant appears unavoidable after the two parties failed to reach a labor agreement. The union says unless the situation is rectified, 5,000 employees will go on strike perhaps as early as March 1st. The serious problem that Anheuser-Busch has and why they won't just write a check and keep this thing from turning into a problem for them because they've given money literally to everyone else is because the Teamsters want a guarantee saying that not only are they going to get more benefits and maybe a little bit more money, but they want a guarantee of job security. That's not something Anheuser-Busch can give people because their volume for Bud Light is off like 29.9% by volume, 30%. It never came back. So how can they guarantee jobs to people that they know are not going to be existing in the next couple of months? So far, they have not had mass layoffs of the people who actually produce the beer for Bud Light and the rest of Anheuser-Busch. But of course they're coming because the volume went down and it never came back up. Quote, the halting of beer production at Anheuser-Busch U.S. breweries appears imminent and unavoidable, the Teamsters said. They can throw billions of dollars at Super Bowl ads in Wall Street but they can't seem to bargain a contract that respects the Teamsters who do the real work inside these breweries. And it's absolutely true. They spent a billion dollars just buying back stock and a few billion more buying back debt, in addition to hundreds of millions of dollars in promotions and advertising and sponsorships. The only reason they can't pay their employees more is because the employees don't just want money, they want job security that Anheuser-Busch can't offer them. The Teamsters claim the company's latest offer included closing breweries and laying off workers. The union also accused Anheuser-Busch of delaying contract negotiations for two months and proposing union workers give up Juneteenth as a paid holiday. Anheuser-Busch did not immediately respond to Fast Company's request for comment about the Teamsters statement, but told the Wall Street Journal, the Teamsters social media posts were false. We have not made a decision regarding our breweries and beer production will continue uninterrupted. And we invite union leadership to return to the bargaining table to reach an agreement that continues to recognize and reward our brewery employees. 
So as part of their negotiation, they are talking about layoffs. They just can't get the union to agree to the layoffs. Union members both brew and package Anheuser-Busch beers, including Budweiser and Bud Light, as well as maintain the breweries and take care of the company's Clydesdale horses. Unions have seen some big successes in the past year, with the Writers Guild of America, Screen Actors Guild, and United Auto Workers Union being some of the most visible. Walkouts in Hollywood shut down wide swaths of the entertainment industry for months, but ultimately did result in pay increases and better working conditions for the union members. Rhetoric from both sides is not uncommon in the course of negotiations as tempers flare and negotiations drag on. Strikes are never a first choice for unions, though, as they do have an impact on workers whose income is severely reduced during the work action. Unions, however, often hold strike authorization votes to show employers their level of seriousness. Anheuser-Busch, meanwhile, could use a break from negative publicity. The company is still trying to win back people who abandoned Bud Light after its sponsorship of transgender influencer and activist Dylan Mulvaney, while others have criticized the brand for seemingly turning its back on decades of LGBT allyship. Sales of Bud Light plunged as the backlash grew with revenue in the United States for the July-September period tumbling 13.5% as U.S. sales of Bud Light were down 29% in the four weeks ended October 21st compared to the same period a year ago, according to Nielsen data compiled by Bump Williams Consulting. The company has said sales have stabilized since then. Anheuser-Busch likes to say, yes, our sales have stabilized. They're not continuing to go down and lower and lower and lower but they are stabilizing at a very, very low number. Anheuser-Busch is hoping to turn things around with its Super Bowl ads. After last year stepping away from the humorous ads it had been known for, Bud Light plans to introduce a brand new character, which it hopes will become as well known as the What's Up Guys and the Bud Light Night. Here's what the teams there are doing in anticipation of striking against Anheuser-Busch. In a major development in the fight for a strong contract protecting 5,000 Teamsters at Anheuser-Busch, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters announced it will more than double strike pay to $1,000 per week for Anheuser-Busch Teamsters nationwide. The increase will go into effect in the event Anheuser-Busch forces the Teamsters who brew, package, and ship Budweiser, Bud Light, and dozens of other beverage brands out on strike March 1st. Anheuser-Busch Teamsters at 12 U.S. breweries are fighting for a fair contract that rewards and respects their hard work and sacrifices, which bring in $58 billion a year for the global beer maker. Here's the main issue, quote, with its ongoing refusal to invest in and protect American jobs, Anheuser-Busch is a legitimate threat to hardworking Teamsters. We've been clear with this company that the Teamsters have a strike fund of more than $300 million, and we will use it to defend our members against those who threaten to destroy their livelihoods. It's important to increase benefits now in the event Anheuser-Busch puts itself on strike, so we will make certain Teamster families don't suffer undue burdens and can hold the line against corporate greed. In December, Anheuser-Busch Teamsters across the country voted by a resounding 99% to authorize a strike if the company does not come to terms on a strong agreement by the expiration of the current agreement on February 29th. Anheuser-Busch dragged its feet in negotiations for months, refusing to commit to job security for its Teamster workforce. You know why they dragged their feet? Because they were hoping, look, if we spend millions on this and millions on that and we do this promotion, Maybe we can get our business back because how can they negotiate with labor and give them guarantees for jobs when their volume is off by 30%? They just can't do it. And here's Trump doing what he can to support Anheuser-Busch. From the DailyMail.com, Trump calls time on Bud Light boycott and says it's paid the price for partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. Donald Trump has U-turned on his stance over woke Bud Light and suggested the beer deserves a second chance just weeks ahead of a fundraiser organized by a lobbyist for the beer's parent company. The presidential hopeful called for an end to the Bud Light boycott, which was sparked by its disastrous campaign with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. The former president said the partnership was a mistake of epic proportions for which a very big price was paid. But he insisted that parent company Anheuser-Busch InBev was not a woke company as he threatened to release a list of those who are. I do believe that Anheuser-Busch InBev is a woke company. I don't agree with him on this one. His comments came ahead of a fundraiser organized by a major Republican lobbyist for the company in March, where tickets are selling for $10,000 each. The event will be attended by dozens of members of Congress, Republican leaders, as well as Donald Trump Jr. Quote, Anheuser-Busch spends $700 million a year with our great farmers, employs 65,000 Americans, of which 1,500 are veterans and is a founding corporate partner of Folds of Honor, 
which provides scholarships for families of fallen servicemen and women, he wrote, on his social media platform, Truth Social. Exactly what Dana White said. It's the same line of stuff. They spend all of this money with American farmers. Sure they do. So would any other beer company. They have 65,000 employees. No, they don't. They have around 19,000 employees, less a few hundred that have been laid off so far. Many thousand probably to be laid off over the next couple months because of the loss of business that Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light are not getting back. That 65,000 number includes distributors who are not owned by Anheuser-Busch, but the talking points are interesting. It's obvious those talking points came from Anheuser-Busch's lobbyists who gave them to UFC President Dana White and Donald Trump. Trump continues, they've raised over $30 million and given 44,000 scholarships. Anheuser-Busch is a great American brand that perhaps deserves a second chance. They are an American brand. They are not an American company. But what do you think? Perhaps instead we should be going after those companies that are looking to destroy America, the former president stated. His comments mark a stark departure from his previous stance in May, when he slammed the makers of Bud Light for pandering to the radical left. Then Trump backed a conservative author who called the ad campaign a woke, clueless, incredibly dumb miscalculation. His climb down comes exactly a month before he is due to meet with Anheuser-Busch InBev lobbyist Jeff Miller, a close ally to former Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who is hosting a fundraiser for the presidential hopeful in Washington, D.C. The brewing giant paid the lobbyist $260,000 in 2023, according to lobbying disclosures seen by Politico. Bud Light is the official beer sponsor of the Super Bowl, but has struggled with a slump in sales since April 2023, when Mulvaney's partnership began with a personalized can. And let's not forget a ridiculous video. Nationwide backlash to the company's marketing even led to some stores selling the beer for less than water, as the parent company lost a staggering $6 billion in market value in just six days after the advertising. Ultimately, their stock went down billions and billions, and eventually it started to bounce back. But not without them spending billions to get the stock price up by buying back stock, buying back debt, hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising, it cost them an absolute fortune, and the brand is still not back to where it was from before the Dylan Mulvaney promotion. Anheuser-Busch is also known for big, crazy mistakes. They actually spent $107 billion to buy an African brewer, S.A.B. Miller, and that transaction did not quite work out for them. So they are used to losing billions of dollars pretty much for absolutely no reason by not thinking things through. From townhall.com, Woke advertising. First advertising wanted to sell, then to entertain. Now it wants to indoctrinate. In the past, advertising was a tool to increase sales. Then advertisers began to see themselves as artists. Today, they see themselves as missionaries for a better world. David Ogilvy, the legendary British advertising guru, had a very clear idea of what good advertising should look like. Good advertising, he repeatedly emphasized, must do one thing above all else, sell. That sounds like a no-brainer. But Ogilvy had to increasingly fight against a different concept. Creatives who saw advertising primarily as entertainment. Whether their ads actually resulted in more of a product being sold wasn't that important to them. They were not primarily interested in getting consumers to embrace a product. They sought recognition from their colleagues in the advertising industry. The primary goal of many advertisers, as Ogilvy criticized in his classic Confessions of an Advertising Man, was to win awards for their creativity. They didn't care one bit whether their spots increased sales, provided they were entertaining and won awards. These creative entertainers had done immeasurable damage to the advertising industry he repeatedly lamented in speeches and interviews. Eventually, Ogilvy actually banned his employees from entering award contests, which actually sparked a mutiny within his company. Ogilvy countered by establishing his own award for results. The David Ogilvy Award was given to the campaign that demonstrably did the most to boost the client's sales or their reputation. Ultimately, however, he was unable to maintain the ban on taking part in award contests. Nevertheless, he did maintain his opinion that most campaigns that delivered real sales increases never won an award. Many creatives feel called to greater things. Some even see themselves as unrecognized artistic geniuses. After all, Andy Warhol also started out as a commercial artist and became world famous for his soup cans. Today, we have gone one step further. Quote, advertising to increase sales and profits in an age when profit is considered immoral is a goal advertising people widely reject. Apparently, advertising is no longer about promoting a product's benefits in order to increase sales. Entertainment is also not enough. 
No, advertising must proclaim political messages and re-educate people. A few years ago, Gillette prompted a backlash with its campaign against toxic masculinity. It is because of the traditional toxic image of masculinity, Gillette claimed, that children bully each other, men sexually harass women, and male employees do not let their female colleagues have a say. While the ads generated a lot of attention, they certainly didn't help sell more products. Mars announced that its M&M candies would be moving away from only one body size to create more respect for the real-world diversity of body shapes. In addition, less emphasis is being placed on the gender of the candies and more is being done to highlight their nuanced personalities. For example, one of the female M&Ms is now dressed in sneakers instead of high heels in order to reflect her confidence and empowerment as a strong female, the company said. The Calvin Klein brand, which previously ran advertisements featuring attractive women and men with great figures, also joined the woke trend and instead ran a campaign featuring an overweight man and an overweight woman. The man has a beard and is wearing a bra. Responses to the photo shoot were predominantly negative. The tweet, quote, Calvin Klein wants to go bankrupt by the Dr. Anastasia Maria Lupus was viewed 7 million times. She was referring to the ad, which features a trans man living in the Netherlands alongside a plus size model. Both are wearing the brand's sports bras. The campaign sparked predominantly negative comments, quote, which women should this appeal to, was asked thousands of times on social media. It's impossible to pinpoint exactly when all this started, but Benetton's legendary advertising definitely marked a turning point. The Italian fashion brand shocked consumers in the late 1980s with large billboards depicting child labor, a blood-soaked t-shirt from a war zone, and an electric chair. Each image appeared with the Italian clothing manufacturer's logo. The advertising industry still celebrates this campaign and its creator, Olivero Toscani. For the company, this campaign represented a financial fiasco from which it has not really recovered to this day. Advertising people do not measure the success of their campaigns on any increase in sales they might achieve, but rather on the approval of the politically conformist left-wing advertising industry. No industry is as uniform in thought as the creative industry, censures the well-known German brand expert Oliver Erichiero. The only absurd thing is that the CEOs of large companies allow these creatives to convince them that this is what advertising should be like today. No one says the emperor has no clothes. Some opportunistically follow every fashion, others are afraid of blowback and are being targeted by left-wing woke activists. But such campaigns actually do much less damage to a company's sales than a failed marketing strategy that forgets that the whole point is to sell a product. Consumers' decisions are based on completely different criteria than advertising people think. If you watch commercials that constantly mention sustainable, save the planet, or even divisive and vegan, you get the impression that the companies believe that the normal population is also thoroughly woke. That is not the case. And that's the whole point of marketing. That's the whole point of advertising, to understand what the customer actually needs, what the customer actually wants, and how your product or service can give them that. People need to see more of a benefit in the value of what you're selling than holding on to the cash that they have. So they give you the cash and you give them something that's worth more than that cash. That's marketing, that's advertising. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.